What's going on guys? So you are in for a completely different type of video at a very familiar location that I film at quite often. That is Ron Hoover RV and Marine here in Corpus Christi, Texas. So you guys have absolutely, I'm sure, seen the marine aspect of Ron Hoover RV and Marine, but typically you only see the interior and exteriors of the RVs. That said, we're gonna try something a little different. We're gonna mix it up a little bit here. now. Big, big disclaimer, I am not a boat expert. I am not. I've been on a lot of boats. I actually deckhanded on a boat when I was growing up and I was in college. That said, I haven't been on a boat in a long time and I haven't worked on a boat in a long time. And I know very little about the industry and the trends that have been taking place. But what I can tell you is that the brand Cape Horn has been a pinnacle in the industry for a long time. Shoot, when I was 20 years old and I spent a lot of time on boats, Cape Horn was that brand that you eyeball and you're like, that's a nice boat. And I don't think that's changed much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this absolutely enormous Cape Horn center console. I think they still call these center console boats, but this is gonna be the model 36 SX. This thing is 36 feet long. That is insane. It's a 36 foot long bumper pull boat. A lot of folks with something this big might actually just keep it, you know, in the water at a marina and maybe not actually take it out of the water except to clean it and service it occasionally. But yeah, this is a huge booger and we are uh, absolutely going to dive as deep as I'm capable of diving into uh, the specs of this boat. So hang tight. I'll be right back. But this is not the 36 SX. This is the 36 XS. So yeah, so I'm trying to work this out. I got a little printout here that they provided me so I can act a little bit educated with this thing. But let's first talk about the elephant in the room. Actually, the three big elephants in the room and they hang off the back of this boat. I can tell this has three 350 horsepower Suzuki outboard motors. That is absolutely insane. All right, so let's dive into some standouts on this. So most people would know if you're into boating, especially offshore boating, where you're gonna go out a, a a far distance having a big deep v on the front of your boat a big deep hull is going to be really important for handling those larger waves now having three motors is really there for redundancy as well as speed you want to get out to your fishing spot as quick as possible especially if you're in a tournament but having three motors if you're going out a far far distance is really important for redundancy if you have a motor that fails or heaven forbid two motors that fail you have a means of getting back and that's really important if you look at these motors you'll actually see that there are dual props on each one of them so having dual props is going to get you on what they call plane faster and it's also going to be more efficient you have dual props that are actually biting and moving water quicker now i don't necessarily think it'll equate to like double the speed or anything like that but it's sure going to make the motors handle the water and actually go through the water more efficiently now again where my knowledge kind of ends is i have no idea what the fuel economy of these are but from what i'm told these are absolutely some of the most efficient outboards you can put on a boat those of you who are marine experts that watch my channel give me your opinion what do you think of the suzuki outboard product ultra low emissions very very cool but yeah these are uh certainly very large motors overall i'm going to say probably the overall height from the bottom to the top is probably six feet very very large motors so stepping around the back of the boat you'll see that it has trim tabs here on the side that help with the stability of the boat all LED lighting on the trailer itself, as well as some really cool underwater LED lights right here. So it's gonna give you some good visibility what's taking place under the water towards the back of the boat. As we come around, I don't see any additional LED lighting running down the side of the hull, but yeah, that's really cool. And I don't think I've ever seen that before, but I guess when you get into these really large boats like this, especially from brands like Cape Horn, you start to see a lot of luxury amenities that, that are nice to have features that you traditionally may not see on other boats. All right, so I'm gonna step onto the deck of this boat and see what it's all about. I'm not wearing deck shoes, and I think that that's some cardinal sin when it comes to boarding a boat, but I love this ladder. That is really cool. It's got a ladder kind of attached to the back, and it's a very interesting design, not your traditional ladder you might see. All right. Now we are on the deck of this boat. Let's see what we have going on here real quick while I pan around. All right, so now we're on board this boat on the deck. Gonna kind of take a look at what we have going on here. All right, so first you have a live well right here, and then you have dry storage right here. 
And back here you have the transom. A lot of rod holders already installed in place. You got some drink holders right here. You have these really cool cleats that have been uh, already pressed down. That's cool. Everything's really sleek when it's not being used. What's down here? All right, so yeah, this is all your power disconnects. This is a water wash down port, so you can basically wash down any fish that you fish in or any fish that you've caught and wash down the deck as well. And this pulls the water from the actual sea. This is really cool, and this looks like it can fold up when you're not using it. Okay, so I've opened up the hatches here. This is access to your fuel cell. This is actually more dry storage. And underneath the seat, you have a live well. Very cool, and it has a nice little clear top on top of it. Nice little grab handles right here, more cup holders. More rod holders going over the structure, or at least the canopy that goes over the center console. This thing is loaded with rod holders. It's got, what, six, seven, seven on the back, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, there's, there's more than 26 rod holders on this boat. So yeah, you, uh, you can definitely get a lot of lines out if you're trying to go fishing or trawling or whatnot. Very cool. Okay, so as we take a deeper look at this really cool canopy here, this is all fiberglass, all LED lighting. The lighting can actually change color, which is super cool. And you have this access port up here, and it's not to get onto the top of this canopy. It's basically so you can have an observation area to look out, because let's say you're trawling and you have a lot of lines out, and you want to see what's going on around you. Or if you're trying to maybe move the boat around down here and you need someone to have eyes on where your lines are so they don't get crossed. I imagine this plays a similar role as perhaps a flybridge on a sport fishing yacht, but at more of a subtle way. You know, you don't really crawl on top onto a flybridge and look out. This is simply so you have greater visibility over what's going on, especially if you have a lot of lines out. If you have 10 or 15 rods out at any given time, you got a lot of lines that can potentially cross, and it always helps, especially if they're out a long way, so you can make sure that they're not overlapping each other. So getting as high as possible in a boat like this can be really, really helpful. Over here, this actually has a freshwater misting system as well. So if it's one of those scorching hot days, maybe the sun is just cresting over the horizon and you're getting baked to death and you wanna have a way to keep yourself cool, you can actually turn on these little ports and they'll spray out a misting water system. Plus you have your speakers around the top as well. Looks like this is probably more storage up here, I'm guessing. There we go. All right, so taking a look at the cockpit area here, if you notice, the bolstering here stands upright. So this is really cool. So you can either sit down or you can actually stand and lean up against them, which is really nice because you do want as much stability and comfort as possible if you're gonna be going out. Believe it or not, some fishing trips can take hours to get out where you're trying to go. And you really wanna be as comfortable as possible. So even though these look really sporty, they're also designed to be very comfortable because you could be sitting in this chair for a long time trying to get out to that spot that you know the fish are at. When you go right here, all digital controls up front. This has what they call the Optimus steering system, which think about it this way, it's more like an electronic hydraulic power assist steering because you do have those three huge Suzuki's back there. And if you have your traditional cable driven system, it's not gonna steer quite as effortlessly as you might like. So this system right here just gives you a lot more maneuverability and control over moving those engines around. And then right here, you can see you have five more cup holders. You got a nice little platform right here. You have a place to put your feet here. So whenever you're sitting down, your feet are actually resting on this platform right there. And again, if you're controlling the boat, you can put this up and I can be leaning against it like this and I can simply steer the boat and be able to see over the center console very nice and effortlessly. You got your compass up here. Very, very cool. And I imagine these are gonna be information on each one of the three engines that you have powering this unit in the back. I like the nice little tractor wheel right here. It makes it easy to steer. Here's your throttle. All right, so going back to that topic on you could be out for a long time. If you need to take a bio break or a restroom break, this actually has a head or bathroom or lavatory or restroom, whatever you want to call it. That is really cool. So yeah, you can actually uh, kind of go down to this area if you need to, use a restroom, do what you need to do in here. These pillows right here actually cover up the front section right there. 
but sometimes you don't want the pillows on if nobody's going to actually be sitting up front or if you're going to be you know cruising along hitting waves you don't want them to possibly come off or you know if one gets loose and you lose one in the water so if you're traveling out if nobody's sitting up there it's best just keep your pillows stowed that way you don't have to worry about uh, losing one in the water and having to go fish it out but that is really really cool check that out okay working our way up front two person seating up here you got some more cup holders this is probably the the best view but keep in mind the closer you are to the front as you start hitting waves you're going to feel it more up front the front's going to be rising and lowering as you crest waves and even just hitting chop the front is probably the roughest spot to sit in in a boat but a boat this size 36 foot long is not a small boat this is they actually make sport fishing yachts that are this size so this is on the extreme length of a towable boat and more so on the extreme length of a center console style boat. So yeah, very, very, very rigid structure they got going on here. And that, that fiberglass canopy is just absolutely beautiful. And one thing to check out about this hard top is that look at the material here. Typically, whenever you see a center console boat or really any boat, the material, it's that normal silver aluminum material. This is all aluminum, but it's been powder coated. And the gauge thickness on this is absolutely insane. I mean, this is just one massive structure that they've built up here. Very, very cool. I like the padding, too, all the way around the edge right here and the railing right here, too. This is actually a pretty good size railing. So when I used to work on boats, this is the area that you'd have to use to maneuver around the actual salon or the cabin area. And sometimes it was really narrow, but even on this boat, being a center console boat, you have a lot of width and thickness right here, which also means this is an area that helps keep the, the boat buoyant and stable. So having the ability to build this out wider gives you that, uh, that additional strength and stability that you're looking for. All right, so I think this may actually tilt up. So yeah, this actually can tilt up so you have a little bit of a leg rest right here if you're gonna be traveling out or just wanting to relax with a cold one going fishing. This right here is a large fish box. So when you reel in those big tunas, this is where you would actually keep them. And it goes back pretty far too. So you can remove that divider right there and you got a lot of room in here. It even has a macerator inside there as well. Whenever it comes time to clean it out, if you have chum and you have stuff that's in there, you can macerate it to help get it out of there in a smaller amount so it's not clogging things up. Let's close that up. It's not a trip hazard. All right, so here is the front of the boat. We are now at the bow. And I know I need to use these terms right or I'm gonna have every uh, every boater and their, their, their mother out here telling me what I said incorrectly, but Let's take a look at what we have going on up here. Okay, so I've opened up one of these so you can see this is where you would store whatever you need to store, but a lot of folks will put all of their life vests in here because it's super important that you have a life vest for everybody on board your boat. And uh, yeah, if you get uh, pulled over by, uh, by Marine Patrol, they will definitely check for that. You got more storage all the way around here. You got storage here, storage here, storage here. Up front, you actually have a motorized anchor. It's called a windlass anchor. Very nice, you got more cleats, more rod holders. Very, very cool. And then all of the pillows that you saw down in the, the head or the restroom area, they all snap into place right here. Very, very cool. What do you guys think? You know, this is pretty awesome. I do wanna step down again and kind of take a look at the front uh, bow section from the outside so you can kind of see just how large of a boat this is. And here's the best way to show you. That's another boat. So look at the, the view I have of all of their boats. And I'm even at the same height, if not taller, than most of the roofs of these RVs. I can actually see on top of the roof of those fifth wheels from where I'm standing. That's just how large this boat is. 36 foot long boat. Okay, now that I'm off the boat, let's talk about the frame. Let's talk about some of the things that are more traditional to a trailer. So this has an all aluminum frame. I don't think it's boxed, but boy, those welds look nice. Check that out. I'm talking about dime stacks. That is crazy. It is a C-channel frame, but then you have these cross members, which are fully boxed. So all your cross members are fully boxed. Very, very cool. This is riding on Goodyear tires. So they put Goodyear endurance tires on here. Three axles but not traditional. So these are torsion style axles. These aren't gonna be leaf sprung. And these are galvanized axles. Let's look at this overall superstructure. Nice LED lighting coming down the side. 
this is one massive, massive boat. You got a manual front tongue jack. Here's your battery right here. And at first I was kind of wondering if they made an electric winch for this. But you know, you typically don't ever see boats with electric winches up front. And I think one of the reasons why is because you don't want salt water. You don't want something getting into that winch that could cause it not to work and you wouldn't be able to pull your boat up. On something like this though, you're typically gonna ride the boat all the way up to the front as far as possible. Very cool. Let's see if there's a sticker on here to look at some of the weight. Okay, so we are looking at the gross vehicle weight rating of this trailer. So the trailer itself has an 18,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, rides on three 6,000 pound axles, 16 inch Goodyear endurance tires. The trailer has a 15,000 pound cargo capacity, which means that the trailer by itself is about 3,000 pounds. So yeah, 3,000 pound uh, trailer with a 15,000 pound capacity. That's absolutely insane. And I would love to know the weight of this boat, but I don't know anywhere that the weight is listed on this boat. I'd probably have to bring my scale system out here to actually weigh something like this. And again, this is one super long boat. Comparing it to like this boat right here, it's just, it's insane how long this boat is. This is like a dream boat for me. I would love to have a boat like this. But what do you guys think? You guys want me to do a little bit more boat content since, you know, I have access to them out here at Ron Hoover. And, uh, you know, I figured if I'm going to start by showing you a boat, I don't know if I'll show more. It depends what you guys think about this video. I might as well show you the biggest boat they have on their lot. Pricing wise, um, I was asked not to go over pricing. I'm going to tell you that it is well north, well north of $100,000, like way north. It's like not even on the same category as $100,000. So. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment. Leave a comment below. What do you think? Should I film some of these other boats? Should we talk about it? Should I bring someone in? Should we uh, learn a little bit more and add some boat content to the channel? Because, you know, if you think about it, a boat is a form of an RV. It is a recreational vehicle. It just happens to be a recreational water vehicle. Anyways, guys, we'll talk to you again very soon.